Welcome back for our final game of the day. In fact, the final game of the regular season here for this part of the LCS Academy. I'm still Julian Page, I'm Carr. He is still Sam Cage in the Rage Ragey, which is just one of the best names ever conceived by man. It's been a fun series so far, but we are going to end off the day uh, on a different note, I guess we can call it here. It's going to be CLG versus EG, if my memory has not broken on me already. It has been a long but very fun day of Academy. And honestly, there's still a lot of implications for this last game because Golden Guardians Academy, Evil Geniuses Academy, and CLG Academy are kind of all vying for that eighth place spot. And as it stands, if you make it to the top eight, you're at the very least guaranteed to the next tournament that's going to be happening, which is the first tier two tournament happen happening in for the Proving Grounds. You know, already know the top six are in, but two Academy teams got to face off in the next one. Yep, it's possible for all 10 teams to get there. It's just the how mm -hmm. difficult the road is, I guess, here. And of course, at 9th and 10th, you have the absolute hardest possible road to qualify. So it'll be fun to see kind of how, how all that shakes out once we get to the postseason here for Academy. But instead, we'll have a look at these two teams, beginning with CLG, who have just... I mean, it's been a, it's been a tough year for the Orc. I think we can put it that way. But uh, mm -hmm. CLG's Academy team, kind of like a, an odd mix of, of things, right? Like, yeah, not the jungler they intended, not the mid laner they started the, the split with. Uh, very interesting for CLG, kind of how they've evolved here uh, as both an LCS and a, an academy team. But I feel like every academy team is trying to find that diamond in the rough, you know, and a lot of these players have shown some real promise and talent, that 1v1 notwithstanding. Tian has really been a, a relatively consistent top laner, and even though his stats don't really show it, I feel like he's still facilitating a lot of things and still plays reasonably well on meta champions. And Kiel especially has impressed me more than I think many of the junglers on these lower half teams, just because he does make a lot of plays. It's just a little bit of communication issues that unfortunately plague CLG Academy and don't allow them to maximize their potential as a team. And I mean, for Kiel, that's very impressive. I mean, something you certainly want to see is him playing aggressively because, uh, you know, Kiel is uh, kind of on, a, on borrowed time, if you will, right? I expected that Griffin will be uh, starting in the academy team once Broxa makes his way to the LCS team, yeah. but who knows when that's going to happen. He did get his visa click, which is great news for LCS fans. We didn't know Broxa has his visa. Whether he's playing this week in the LCS, who knows? But it's always a mystery. Kiel, Kiel is at least going to finish off this regular season with CLG here, because, uh, of course, Griffin is still, as we know, playing with the LCS team. Upper Belt is here now, so like that's probably been a mix-up. Like it, it does feel tricky to... to find you know synergy and communication with a very small amount of games in the regular season for academy but also when pieces change so much so it, you can feel for clg but they are still battling here and could potentially make themselves make their lives a little bit easier in the postseason if they can't grab a win here and that final eighth spot on the other side evil genius academy also gone through a lot of differences since we last saw them or at least i last saw them in 2020 uh eg very different looking team again a team that's looked pretty good in the lcs so far maybe up and down but a very different roster once again they're picking up a lot of the scouting ground talent and there's still a lot of good players on this team again i i don't see really a whole lot other than consistency issues with evil geniuses academy because especially tony top when he plays well he's a monster he can 1v9 by himself on that renekton pick i think we saw that two weeks ago he can absolutely be this amazing player he's just not that every single time and i think that's what separates the good players from the great players is the ability to not only perform on other picks but to consistently play among picks that you're comfortable with and i think once evil geniuses academy give him a little more time tony top could very well become this incredible player yeah, I mean, that's uh, one of the more exciting picks. Uh, it was the first drafted overall last year in Honda Scouting Grounds 2020. Uh, definitely a fun one to watch out for. As uh, He's you know, the kind of player that everyone talks about his jacks and how aggressive it is. Maybe you mm -hmm. can see it today, who knows? Um, but certainly a player that's definitely still developing, like we say about a lot of the newer players to Academy, kind of making the jump from amateur Scouting Grounds level up into Academy. Um, it does take time. To, to figure these things out right and uh, EG have a lot of different newer players on their roster contracts uh, isn't one of those he's definitely been a veteran of both the LCS the international stage and now in academy um, but since swapping teams it does feel like contracts hasn't quite found the same groove that he had so he's definitely kind of figuring out how he wants to be playing with uh, his new teammates and I think Shoyu kind of the other one here that's um, someone to look out for because he has been around a while and he mm -hmm. was Easily one of the top amateur uh, ADs and one of the hottest looking players from Scattergrounds last year. And turns out, leave his out to Academy. Competition is pretty good. 
which I think is a good thing for the future of North America as uh, kind of Amateur Academy and LCS kind of all build out that pipeline together. But like the fact that Troy was so good at the level he was playing at and is now on a team that isn't doing all that hot doesn't speak to his individual skill. I think he's still very good as a player, but there are levels. And EG, I think, with a pretty new team, are just trying to figure out what that means to be meeting those. I mean, there's nothing really wrong with, you know, having a new roster and then not having the results of a first place team or a second place team or even a fifth place team, because sometimes it takes time to grow. And I think this is a team that definitely has potential to grow and a real potential to, once they gain synergy, to start taking some surprising wins. Because I feel like if they start drafting better, if they start really playing to their strengths, this is a team that could perhaps upset the top for sure, but for now they're going to have to battle against CLG, and again, 8th place is the thing on the line. The winner of this game gets to be 8th, which is a little bit better for your qualifier chances moving into Proving Grounds. The loser, unfortunately for them, will be 10th, but have to play the game, right? Especially because mm -hmm. especially because the format of the league, even though the season is short, kind of maximizes like this big like tournament style. I have to imagine like bracket right where i think 16 teams qualify through how it's exactly laid out i don't know yet that's something we'll all find out together later on as proving grounds format is eventually unleashed but like there's lots of different teams kind of vying for attention there the amateur teams are trying to prove themselves here the academy teams are basically trying to navigate through uh, what is now their newer bigger playoffs um and you want that opportunity right so for either team whichever path you end up going down you do want to make sure you make it there at the end because uh like we've seen uh, the competition is very fierce. I think the amateur teams mm -hmm. are very hungry to prove themselves against academy teams as well. I think we're going to see some really spicy matchups as we get further and further towards that scouting grounds and really seeing how these teams pair up, not only the academy and amateur, but also just the amateur scene getting more exposure is fantastic because a lot of these players are so talented and have the hunger to really drive it up and maybe even one day make it to the LCS and beyond. All right, well, again, we'll be coming up in just a few moments, I imagine, about one minute away. So uh, draft will be underway in just a few moments. Uh, the other thing, I guess, if you're uh, new to Academy and aren't sure who some of these players are, for a lot of them, these are newer faces uh, to the NA Academy scene, at least. One that isn't new, though, but may confuse you, is old mate Hooks there in the bottom lane. That is Auto. That was uh, formerly a AD carry, which, as the name might suggest, uh, has decided that as a support player now, after roll swapping, he wants to be known for his Hooks instead. And it as expected, definitely plays Thresh and other style of champions. But always fun to see when players mix things up. And uh, it's hooks instead of auto, because I guess that's just appropriate. I mean, it makes sense to me. He used to lane with Phil when they had the auto oh, Phil yeah. lane back oh, in the boy. days. Good good times. Uh, the hooks, hopefully he'll be able to lane with someone like uh, maybe an AD carry named Perfect. You know, Perfect Hooks. Ooh, I, I like know. that. There's a lot of spicy options available when you have such an open-ended name that has so much applicability to the game. You don't want to, yeah. You don't want to like uh, pair up with someone like that, like never hits or like always misses. No. You don't want that. You need the, you need the encouragement. At a certain point, you have to blame the coach on that one, though, because you know what you're doing at that point. If you draft <laughs> hooks and then you draft, you know, never hit or awful or whatever. <laughs> but if you draft like perfect, then it's great. Yeah. I guess uh, maybe big ones are all swap. You know, he oh, could yeah. do the AD and it could be big hooks. That'd be kind of cool. I would love that lane. I don't know what it would look like, but I imagine it would be spicy. I, two hookers. Like, you, you get two people with hooks, and you get, like, a Thresh and a Nautilus, and you just, you know, they go at each other. I would love that. All right. We'll have to see. But Champ Select is now live, I believe. So let's have a look here. CLG versus EG. Drafty time. Ooh. We're very hey, we're done. Through. No, we're not. Oh. Just kidding, guys. Don't look at that. Ladies and all in between. Anything. As we do Didn't see. see anything. All right. CLG thinking about their first band. Very, very tough. Uh, after the debate, Renekton is going to be the first band away, making sure Tony Top does not become the monster that we saw several weeks ago. Definitely talented in this champion, and speaking of champions you never want to see, Udyr, it, it, all five games, he's gone. Never again. Yep, this is kind of like a classic draft thing where like Blue Side has some flexibility to target ban, and uh, Red Side just has to take the, the good champions out of the pool. Uh, CLG's kind of doing both. They're taking the good champions that these players play out of the pool. Contract Graves, very well known. Tony Tops Renekton, as you said, very fearsome. Uh, but EG responding with Udi and Seraphine, who are starting to become the staples of 11.3 Red Side bands. Nidalee also going to be taken away from Contract, so none of his like super mechanically heavy, aggressive, farm-heavy stuff is going to be let in. And Senna continues to get banned in most of our games today, if I recall correctly. But mm -hmm. it does leave all 
soul left available to kill, and he takes it very quickly. So some top tier picks still left alive. We do see the Azir is up, the Kaisa is up. I imagine Evil Geniuses Academy are looking at that Kaisa and thinking, sure, you would do good with that. Probably pair that with literally anything because the only support ban was Seraphine. And they have a lot of options here. Rel, of course, always an option and going to be locked in. Will the Kaisa be taken away? I have to think that you don't want Katsuri on that. Well, Maybe they are going to go for the mm. top lane matchup instead. Blind pick Camille there for Tony Top. He is very good on this champion, uh, but interesting to see EG want to take it so early. Uh, also, another fun fact between these two teams. I, I mentioned this before, but this is maybe the matchup that best indicates this, is that uh, Academy's seen like an influx of new coaches this year, which has been really cool, and a lot of them are former players, which I think is something that we'll start to see uh, more and more of. In fact, if you look closely, or not even that closely, at uh, Cloud9 as an organization, and uh, <laughs> what coaches they pick up, unsurprisingly, Cloud9, who are known for their great coaching stuff and their ability to develop talent, all of their coaches are former players. So maybe something that everyone's picking up on. But uh, it is uh, Benji and Matt, uh, two former bot laners, actually. I don't think they ever played together, but uh, they're the coaches of CLG and EG, respectively. And as I ramble on, it is Azir and Thresh. Hooks Ooh. is going to make make his name proud. Alrighty. And on the other side, that's not happening. Don't even pretend. That's not happening either. Academy. No. Uh, I I would probably leave this cast if that ever got locked in. Uh, <laughs> no cap. As we do see them hovering, the Lilia could very well happen for contracts. I feel like he'd be mechanically inclined towards a character that runs around a lot. And it would complement the team pretty well. It gives the uh, follow-up to the engage coming in for Brel and uh, Camille. So that will be locked in. Pretty good for Evil Geniuses Academy. The Kaisa, curiously left up by both sides. I don't know what's going on with that. Maybe there's uh, some secret counter picks happening. Who knows? Uh, maybe mm -hmm. she'll get banned. Very curious to see how that all works out. But 10 seconds for EG's first ban of phase number two. And uh, draft going a little bit more slowly. Uh, I think after the last draft, we kind of got spoiled for champs like speeds because Cloud and TL were so prepared that they basically insulted every pick. Fairly we didn't think about it at all. But uh, Fairly was going to get banned here, which I really like. It's a super strong AD, very good pairing with Thrash because... Thrash gives Aphelios some ability he desperately needs. And of course, if you leave Aphelios alone in a team fight, he kills your whole team. So, not a good one to leave up. And Aurelia also going to be banned away from Jojo Pune. He's not really the best assassin player necessarily, but it is a counter to the control mages, especially the Azir that's already been locked in. So, really trying to make sure Pobelter has the best possible time that he can. If we're talking about speeds of lock in, uh, one interesting fact. Team Liquid Academy typically has the fastest games. CLG Academy typically has the slowest games, even in losses. Mm. They actually take a very long time to defeat if you manage to get that far. So I imagine they're playing for the late game more often than not. They still have many options available to them for the bot lane role, as well as uh, the top lane. So they can scale up if they want to. Again, Kai'Sa, I... I am so bewildered that that pick has not been like picked up yet, has not been banned. It, do, does Shoryu and Katsuri just not feel it? I don't know. I mean, Shoryu could pick for himself now. Kai's actually dropped all the way to uh, first pick phase two, potentially, if that's where she gets taken. Uh, Oriana and Gangplank with the other two bands there. And uh, Shoryu is like, yep, I'll take this champion for it. That seems pretty there good. There it is. Okay, so uh, phase two of picks. That actually is going to be hovered. Maybe they heard me, and uh, they lock in the Lucian. Okay, great. You got me. That's yeah, a uh, good bait on that one. Lucian and Rel coming in as the bot lane Shoryu Mystiques. Yeah, I mean, could be Lucian mid, I guess, is the only other option. But uh, we'll see. Uh, Lucian, Lucian AD, I feel like, is something that I keep getting told is much better in bot lane than you might think, but has it come up mm -hmm. all that often? We've seen it quite a lot in mid lane recently as a kind of counter pick to things like Oriana. Pretty good in those moments, but uh, that's a Riven from T. Yeah. Because every top laner is also a Riven one trick. They just, it's buried in there. They have, they have it ready. I mean, I think that was Kumo's premier game from FlyQuest Academy. He uh, came in with a Riven, got a quadra kill, I believe, in that first it's Academy game that he ever played. Uh, Samira and Kaisa going to be the last hover. Callista as well. Okay, so this has been kind of an outside pick for a lot of professional players. They've been thinking, okay, so we have the Kaisa. We need something a little more aggressive and something that can fight short range. So that's going to be the lock-in and Katsuri. Not going to be against that. Why are you hovering that, Mystiques? Come on, man. Don't do it to me. <laughs> He's not going to do it to you, I promise. I know he's Ten not. Ten seconds. I know he's not. But if he did, though. Again, I'm, I 
I got dinner. I can I'd be solo that. costing. All right, Kaiser yeah. instead. So he's going to be Lucian solo in. Uh, a little AD heavy, but they got Lilia to maybe uh, supplement some of that. I like it. AG getting kind of spicy here. Also, I guess Lucian into Azir makes sense. You just want to be aggressive because Azir mm -hmm. left unchecked is uh, a menace. So this is one of the ways, kind of like Aurelia that you were saying, where you can uh, look to get play earlier in the matchup. But uh, of course, if Pobelto survives the onslaught, uh, might be a tough time here. Jojo Pukun also not going to be going all in with something like Ignite by the looks of things. So going to be a bit more of a balanced matchup there in mid, although Lucian should certainly expect to get ahead early. This is a surprisingly scrappy team coming in from Evil James's Academy. I would think that they want a more easy win condition, just try to play through a 5v5 team fight. But it looks like what they're trying to enable is to let Tony Top and Jojo Pune and Shoryu kind of split the game as far as humanly possible. Maybe even go for like a three lane threat and then try to get uh, CLG Academy off balance by forcing them away from the 5v5 team fight condition that they've been trying to build with the Azir and the Callista specifically. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to be the most exciting thing to run head on into CLG. So I imagine AG will be doing some skirmishing and some split pushing. Mm -hmm. Kind of feels like it's going to be a fun battle between the two top laners, but we are going to find out shortly how the teams do because we are live into game for our last game of the day. It's in fact the last game of the entire Academy regular oh. season or this time period in the year. No tiebreakers, nothing left, <laughs> but CLG Academy versus Evil Genius Academy. And kind of a treat to send us out, Tony Top on Camille, one of his uh, better known champions. Not the Jack, sadly, but Tien on Riven, because like I said, it just seems like every in every top lane there is a Riven main wanting to be unleashed. And this is Tien's game to finally unleash. I think that's like a requirement for academies. You have to have like a Riven as one of your top three played champions. And if you don't, then you're just, you're cut. It's over. There are like a unreasonable amount of top laners that have played or play in North America that were mm -hmm. at one point Riven mains. Lolo, Broken Blade, mm -hmm. Viper, Revenge, Kumo. Kumo. A lot and of Mons. options. There. There, I think, all like, of them. I'm like, is like Ligris the only non-Riven man? <laughs> I feel like he's played Riven though. It's not like he can't play the champion. Right. I'm, I'm sure if we dig deep enough. Like every Everyone... <laughs> every single top laner in history has has a ribbon as their one At trick. Least one ribbon game. I mean, it's very yeah. fun, champion. I get it. Contracts here starting on the blue buff. Solo starts in the jungle here. Keel getting low, but that's part of the plan. Brawl off. Yep. Just getting that. Up that axe. Just doesn't want it. Just getting the attack speed, you know? That's uh, the the trick with Olaf. You take the blue and the Krug at the same, or the Gromp at the same time. Easy peasy. And it's kind of like that, a big Krug. I'm there with you. It is. It's like a, it's like a frog looking rock. You know? You feel me on that pastry? I would hope not, because that made absolutely oh, yeah. no sense. No, I'm, I'm here for it. Okay, it makes great. Makes sense. It's like, yeah. It's, it's game five, folks. Frog like. It is. It has yeah. been a long but very f fulfilling day. As Tony Top has already been pushed in. This matchup, I'm, I'm just going to watch because uh, not particularly familiar with Riven vs. Camille, if I'm being honest with you. But it seems like a lot of fun. It seems very skill-based. skill, skill based. Yeah. I, I mean, there's a lot of dynamic things that can happen. I think Tony Top has the advantage just because Camille has more options for the ranged engage with the hook shot. Uh, but that's not to say Tian can't, like, find a means in, especially with the broken wings. That said, though, it, it just feels easier to execute from, from the red side. Right. Definitely a lot of uh, ways to interrupt Camille Hookshot, potentially, for Riven as well. But as you can see, this is kind of like Camille 101. If you get your second proc of Q, you hit him, probably mm -hmm. winning the trade, especially if your passive is up. Uh, one of the Camille passive is the true power of that champion. Or oh, at least in the early game. Definitely. Then in the late game, it's like you just get Q2 and your AD carry explodes and you wonder how you lost the game. <laughs> and you're like, oh, we had an AD carry. That's what happened. Ah, as we do we see did. Tony Top just kind of pushing in. We'll be able to use that shield, as you can see. And also the heal on W. Since we are on 11.3, the 0.4 patch hasn't been applied for anyone, really. So we don't have the reduction on healing quite yet. We'll still be able to keep a pretty hefty sustain versus a Riven who inherently doesn't have any lifesteal. All right, well, Contract was up there, but he was just making sure Tony Top could push in safely, which he has indeed done. Ten doing a good job of keeping the farm even, which is good to see, but looks like it was Longsword many pots as the start, and he's now drank all of them. Bottom lane, 
Troy versus Katsuri here. Well, early lead here for the uh, Callista and Thrash. I guess we can expect that. Kaiserlins tend to be pretty chilled out, even with Halo Blades for a bit of earlier game power. And Rel especially is like, Rel does not inspire like absolute lane dominance to me. No. As a support, she inspires like, oh, a fight starting? Yeah, you got it, Chief. And then you everyone explodes because her engage is just so good. Although we yeah, have just... seen some good Rel plays. You can get it done. You can, and generally disengage seems to be the name of the game, especially when you have such a scaling uh, carry in the bottling with you, so Mystique's is playing this about as well as he can. We'll both take the back at this point, just to make sure they're ready for Dragon, which is spawning up in 10 seconds. Looks like it will be a Mountain Dragon to start us off, and who is the jungler closer? It's Keel. Is actually towards the bot side. Contracts deciding that this top focus for Tony Top is going to be the, the win condition for this game. It's a pretty good win condition, if uh, Tony Top's performance at Scouting Guys was any indicator. Even though he's obviously played a lot more games since then. Mm -hmm. This kill is going to go ahead and sneak in undetected with the sweeper running and solo out this dragon. Doesn't need the help, will be provided some by hooks just because might as well get a bit of extra safety and damage to Olaf. There we go, lands that first hook, always good to see. And the ghost doesn't spot anyone, but Evil Geniuses Academy have already shown themselves, so not really any surprises to CLG Academy, who will take the back for now. Keel's going to be safe for the moment. And you can see Jojo Pune actually earning a bit of an advantage against Pobelter, both in the push and in the CS department. So really making the most of this Lucian pick that uh, it's not uncommon, but it's certainly not the toppest of top tier. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens if uh, Azir is kind of the meta right now. For Control Mage, as we did actually get from Pretty all the way back in game number one, talking about how this feels like it's that Control Mage Verdant Barrier meta. Uh, definitely lots of potential things people can do, so it'd be kind of fun to see the counter picks evolve. Uh, Lucian kind of in that in that zone, which is always fun to see. Tony Top, though, has uh, suffered some some casualties to the health bar mm -hmm. in his last trade since we saw him. Tien's also TP back up, has a hammer, so that's probably going to contribute. Here's Keel, by the way. Pass oh, it out. Okay. Kian already eating too much damage, but the dive is still on. Riven ready. Oh, the interrupt there with a W. Throws out the oh. AP and doesn't kill him. Uh, outplayed, perhaps, as Tony Top manages to just barely slink away. Keel tries to land the axe. Not going to happen quite yet, but Tien isn't done. He tries he to go in. Surely they're dead now. Oh, the passive is back up again. Tony Top. Oh, oh. we got the interrupt. With the tower aggro isn't there yet, they handle redive again. Now the Hextech ultimatum is going to buy him all time, and Tien <laughs> is finally going to get first blood. Wow. <laughs> but it cost him his life. And no assist for Keel. He is just the spectator in this 1v1. Uh, unfortunately for Tony Top, he gets he goes down first and therefore will not pick up the experience, or at least as much experience as Tien would have picked up. So it's, it's close, but for the moment, CLG Academy seems to have the lead in the top. I mean, that is about as well as I could have gone for Tony Tub. Yeah, played that really well, actually. And now, now TP's back, so actually going to be ahead uh, because Tien has to walk back to lane, although not taking all that long. So we'll call it even, I guess. Pretty close to. Uh, definitely excited to see uh, more shenanigans in the top lane because I don't think they're done fighting each other slash calling their junglers. Nope. And, you know, the, the thing about Tien in this Riven pick, he didn't know that Tony Top is also a Riven main. Ah, of course. Yeah, so that's uh, that really played out poorly for uh, for him. That dive could have been a lot known cleaner. should because he knows everyone's yeah. a Riven man. Should have known All that. Right, let's, let's watch this again. We gotta, because it really comes down to the minor mechanical plays. Tony Top using the invulnerability of the Hextech Ultimatum and the Hookshot at the perfect times to avoid the broken wings and the extra auto attacks coming in. Yes, he gets stunned up, but look at Tian's positioning right here. He is too far in, and there's no way out at that point. Keel... Probably could have taken a little bit of aggro there just to help out, but instead, you know, you got to be the side character. You, you got to be commenting on the fight. You got to be saying, oh, I can't believe he did that every so yeah. often. Otherwise, it's not exciting. I like, uh, I mean, he's basically forced into like, you know, the bleaches, right? Had to just spectate outside the octagon as Tony Top is dueling Tien in the Hextech Ultimatum. Just kicked out, forced to cheer. Yeah. Something Olaf's pretty good at. I mean, he's, a, he's actually, isn't that like referee Olaf? He's just refing the fight. Yeah, and it's official. It's a tie. Double double knockout. Yeah. All righty, Contract spinning on the Rift Herald. Always nice to see. Should be able to pick this one up with no real problems. Jojo Poon going to run up as well. Uh, Hooks is up here. 
but uh, it's going to be too late, I think, to contest for this. Although, Contract is going to be mapped by a Pobelta. Okay. Needs a little bit of help here to make sure this happens. Does smite it down and run over, so he's going to be fine. Just threatening there for POB. Knows that he's probably not really going to get much done, but at least wants to have a look in and uh, see what's happening. And indeed, the Rochelle that was being taken. And you know, as many struggles as Contracts has had this entire season, he doesn't miss smites. I don't think he's had a steal or had anything stolen from him thus far this season. So at the very least, he can be happy about that. And uh, honestly, that's some, a strength that you should be able to keep as a jungler, despite moving uh, positions, moving from LCS to Academy or Academy to other teams. It really stays with you when you have the ability to just kind of keep the mental up. And Tony Top and Tiana are just going to oh, interrupt. Him. Really nice interrupt there with the Q for Broken Wings. Ragnar gonna move Tony Top in, and Kiel gonna knock him down. You know, that was a lot less exciting with uh, Kiel helping out because it uh, made the ending a little more predictable, if I'm being honest. Mm. Six out of ten. All right, well, maybe not as flashy, not as fun, but certainly gonna get the job done there for CLG as Kiel continues to revisit top lane and punish Tony Top. Contracts now onto the Scuttle Crab. Looking pretty good now. Level eight. Got that last chapter already done. It is going to be damaged Lilia, which you'll love to see. No Moonstone Renoa this time around. Have we seen a Moonstone all day? I don't think we have. Uh, no. Actually, it's it's been all damage coming in from these AP threats in the jungle. So good on these teams for really picking the aggressive options as opposed to the probably safe and more calculated options. Looking back right, at well, this here we team go fight. Again. Yep. So it's really just Tony Top overextending. And we get the cinematic angle of the axe coming in. Fantastic. The stun to follow up as well. So really, it's just chase down the Camille. It's pretty simple. You you hit the Q, and then you hit the stun, and then you hit the Q again. From yeah, Olaf. I mean, Tien had that uh, had the interrupt unlocked. Didn't even need to use the W yeah. to knock up Tony Top out of the hookshot. So once that happened, it was all she wrote. Keel going to go ahead and grab the Drake. CLG actually up two Drakes to zero. Three kills in this game, but as many Drakes for CLG as they have kills, which is actually usually a good thing in the early game. Oh, go to sleep. Well, getting damaged. eached up by contracts and just going to keep spinning. I don't oh. know if Riven can run away from this. Nope. Here's Tony Top. Wants to get a kill. Going to keep running, but Contract says, nope. Ooh, Flash Swell Seed Spin, I believe, was the combo. Don't see that one every day. I don't know that a Flash was necessary for Lilia just to keep the solo gold. Uh, it's It feels like you want Tony Top to just get a little bit. You know, you're facilitating a carry more often than anything, so Contract's a little greedy on that. Does manage to pick up the kill and has a great timing. It just feels like you're missing out on gold that you don't need to miss out on. Well, Tony Top gonna get the Rift Herald gold at least, but across with Contract from that plate, so Contract does at least pay some back using that Herald. Almost takes the tower out as well, uh, but not really able to stay because couldn't see anyone else, and Hooks did rotate up, so naturally you think there is more people there. There aren't, but can't know that. Have to play the information that's presented to you in League of Legends sometime, and more often than not, when players take risks, uh, with imperfect information, they get punished. So Tony Top and a Contract's not going to stick around. And we do see Katsuri just farming up. And in this bot lane, it's been pretty quiet just because we've been so focused on the top side. But Katsuri does have a small lead coming in, about 16 CS for the moment. And the back from Shoryu means this is going to be even further uh, widened this gap. And I feel like Katsuri is exactly where he wants to be. He wants to be ahead in the early game, making sure as we get to the mid-game skirmishes that he's able to bounce around the threats that are going to be coming in from Evil Genius' Academy, specifically Contracts and Mystiques, just because the others are going to be uh, probably much more mobile and much more of a threat that Callista won't be able to deal with. Alrighty, great vision here for CLG, actually. Double control wards. There is a brush set, by the way. Don't be fooled. I know the Ocean Rift Spectator mode. Mm. Sometimes forgets that that brush exists, but it does. It's real. It works. I promise. It's there. And uh, CLG have all of that control. I mean, 2 minutes 45, you have to feel like they're just going to waltz in and take that dragon as soon as it comes up. So EG are going to have to figure out a solution for that. But our hidden gold as a result here. It's kind of everything shuffles around and Contracts has been delivering plate money with the Herald. So we'll see what happens. I imagine EG are going to fight for the third one here. A W lands! Sorry, I got excited got for a second there. Okay. Jojo Pune is just going to back off. As you were talking about, go to the Dragon. CLG Academy, again, have the vision advantage, but the pressure advantage for the moment, at least, uh, going over to Evil Geniuses, unfortunately, we're two minutes out, so not really the most effective time to be around that area of the map. And that's exactly why you see Contracts just moving towards the top and might even go for Pobelter here, but more than likely just here to clear vision. 
Does do the full seat, does hit a bit of wall. Contract's not gonna have uh -oh. to run away because Ragnarok's uh -oh. been popped, and I think that's a dead uh -oh. Lilia. Yep. Ulti out of Evolution there, but that's not enough to save your jungler as Keel is gonna pick one up. And that's a lot of the cascading effect that happens when you get greedy for kills because this all comes from the flash being blown two minutes ago and leading to Keel just forcefully moving forward using the Ragnarok. There's nothing you can do about that. There's no flash, there's no escape for Lilia. He's just going to be faster than you. He's going to run you down, and you're dead. Yeah, Greedy clearing that ward, I feel like the contracts just was like, oh, a control ward. Let me take it. He was like, hi, I'm here. You're dead. As Tony Top is pushing us in. It does have Trinity Force finish. In fact, it's a couple Mythics on the top side of the map. For both of these teams, Gold Drinkers in both the uh, top lane and jungle on the sealed side, but Tony Top, the first one to take that tower, thanks to the Rift Child contracts deployed earlier. Keel, though, is looking to roam around, and two Glow Drinkers versus one Camille. Who's gonna win? Uh oh. Hey, it's all up. Tony Top, plus the contracts. Ooh, contracts. Ooh, Teleport? As well. Going for it there, but oh my goodness, what? contracts just disappears. It's a magic trick that he wishes not to repeat. As sealed, you walk away with yet another kill. And that's unfortunate. Just, again, no flash, no real means of escape, and no disengage coming out of this team without Mystique. So if you ever catch out the Lilia and you're on CLG Academy, you consider yourself pretty lucky because there's not really a whole lot she can do without flash. And Contracts, unfortunately, feeling a lot of pressure at this point in the game, hasn't been able to really move around a lot. The only kill he's gotten was that top kill that cost him his flash. Otherwise, he just hasn't really been able to make an impact quite yet. Yeah, where's Keel? 3 0 0. Mythic yeah. finish, zooming around, covering for his top laner. Even got the kill uh, to, on Tony Top as well, who has continued to be aggressive, which I think makes sense. He's got the Triforce. He's felt like he had an edge in that matchup, at least at that point. But I think again, he's going to feel pretty good at the point he's currently up to. Also, the Dragon has spawned, so teams are going to be grouping around there. EG already in the area, but CLG are the ones that want to pick themselves up their third at Drake for the quick soul snowball. But let's watch this one again, because Tony Top thought he had an escape. He was wrong. He goes from one champion to another champion, and Keel right there to stop him lands the Q. Very good, and I like the follow coming up from the end. Uh, it, Contracts tries to help out, does manage to land the sleep onto two, and Jojo Pune also had teleported. But by then, the fight was over. There was no engage path possible. Tony Top didn't have his hook shot available, and the Hextech ultimatum likely would have been wasted had he used it on Keel. Whoa! EG going in. Contract what? Trying to steal that dragon, and Brel does indeed take it. Now the fight's going to break out there as EG starting to spin on the rest of CLG. Tony Top flashing Ooh. in. There's a shutdown over to Jojo Pune, and it's two dead, plus the dragon stolen. CLG misstep around the dragon pit. Okay, so I like this play coming in from Evil Geniuses Academy. We said that Contracts was struggling a little bit in this game, had died twice in a row in the last two minutes, but that doesn't mean you should give up. There's always another play to be made, and that play was Dragon. Keel and Katsuri hooks as well, getting a little hyphy, going over the wall and thinking they can steal that dragon. That's not how it works. Very curious how Mystique's got that dragon. Perhaps yeah. we'll find out. Perhaps it will be yet another mystery. Jojo Pune, though, playing some music. Valentine's Day, unfortunately, has already passed, so a little late, but let's watch this. Yeah, whatever happened here was wild. Brel's just in the back of the pit, chilling out. And apparently got it with the Attractum Repel. That's pretty wild that neither of the junglers were around the dragon. You can see Poe Belter just trying his best to auto-attack, and unfortunately, he can't out-damage the final hit. So Mystique's very well done to get that steal. Was that a miss? Right? That must have been really close, whatever happened there. But uh, all right, Mystique's with a great engagement the back of the Dragon Pit. Gets the bonus Dragon as well, always feels good. It sure uh, does. The tower is low because the Rift Tower was dropped as CLG tried to take the Dragon away from EG. And unfortunately, they got it stolen and EG did actually manage to save their tower before the Herald finished it off. Tian also finishing off this bottom lane here. Riven actually pretty good at this stage. Again, probably not going to like straight up beat Camille in a 1v1 because Precision Protocol is a really good ability. Mm -hmm. But you can definitely keep the lane pushed in and you're much better in team fights and people will let on to believe. And with that, you can see the Evil Geniuses Academy, they now can call the bluff of CLG Academy. They can push forward, they can push out the mid especially, and maybe even defend this top side, but Keel, he's pushing forward and I feel like Mystique's in position means he can't contest for this win. He's gonna try. Okay. Lance does find the rail, and now they're going to go in onto 
Krill as Ragnarok is pumped. Oh. He got the red. He gets out. No, Tien's going back in. Does use the ulti there. And Contract's almost dead, but not out just yet. Falls asleep, does the ribbon, but Contract's going to live, and that's what he really wanted. And Hooks, signing in a pretty good hook. They went on to Mystiques, who seemed like too tanky of a target, but honestly, there wasn't really an opportunity cost to that. They just got a lot of damage down. They didn't manage to pick up any kills, but they did force out some ults. They did force out uh, Heal out of Shoryu, and... Quite honestly, I think that was the right play coming out of CLJ Academy. Yeah, gonna go ahead and get the top tower as well. So they're actually up in turrets as a result as well. Uh, Gold's still just barely ahead for EG, but CLG doing a really good job of just trading, keeping the map you know, even, farming up. They're clearly confident in their scaling. When you draft Azir, that's uh, like a reasonable thing, <laughs> I think, to be leaning on. Tony Top also has begun his split push journey. That uh, Tien's gonna meet the wave there in bottom side, but... Definitely someone to watch here as the game goes on, because it doesn't feel like EG want to go for 5v5s is their main way of winning this game. So Tony Top's probably going to have to do quite a lot of side lane work to kind of get EG through this mid game into a lead. We're at the point where both neither team has a significant lead. We're at about, what, 500 gold for Evil Geniuses Academy at 20 minutes into the game. That's not going to be significant. In terms of item leads, there's not really anything of note. Yeah, you could argue Tony Top has a little bit extra, but it's not going to be enough to really beat Tien in 1v1 quite yet, unless he's alone, in which case Keel will not be able to interfere, and maybe Tony Top wins this. Oh, this is a 1v1 I did want to see here. Oh, Keel's here, so never oh. mind. That's not a 1v1. Ooh. Tony Top goes oh, back in. Oh, assassinates what? the Riven. And okay. now Keel going to be running in. Now, Tony Top, I don't think he can get out, but he made it look real good on the exit. Now going to, ooh, actually hook shot away. Axe not going to land. Hooks. Oh, hooks. Just so rude. Kills him with a play. Actually, it's uh, Keel that picks that one up. I guess that was oh, an that? extra axe that might have gotten it. No flash needed. So pretty clean coming out of CLG. Uh, Tien got obliterated there. That was pretty yes. crazy. That was some Camille... You know, Q2 classic right there with the Trinity Force. You think mm -hmm. you have a health bar, and then bam! It's all taken away. Precision Protocol 2 is uh, nothing to joke around about. No. I believe uh, one David Freak Tully recently described it as uh, Cho'Gath Ultimate on a Q when Camille stole the Baron in the LCS a few weeks ago. And uh, that's like pretty reasonable, I think. But it also does that to champions. Very true. Uh, the only difference, you don't get extra health for it unless you have Grasp yeah. and Dine. And then I guess but you do, does. so it's equivalent. Good point. Exactly the same Thank ability. you, Freak. <laughs> Alrighty, well, CLG is still posturing here around this dragon. It is up and ready for the taking. Didn't get the last one because it got stolen away by Mystique's the bandit. So Evil Genius is looking to fight here. Ooh, actually, let's watch this one again, because this was just so satisfying for a Camille player. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> goodness. A third of the health bar just gone immediately. And also dodging out that axe was pretty impressive. Yeah, Tony uh, Top there, did everything to live here. There's just not a whole lot you can do once Hook showed up. Keel, he takes the lantern, but it doesn't matter. The axe had already landed, and the hatchet in the back means Camille does not survive. Alrighty, well, dragon fight actually did not happen. Which I think we could have probably guessed, but EG are going to start up the objective now. CLG looking to try and take this one away, give themselves a sole point. But if they can maybe get more, win a big team fight, grab a Baron. Everything on the table here on the CLG side. Evil Genius is trying to defend. Oh, Tien around the back. I like that angle a lot. Hook's also getting shot down, but not too low. Dragon's also getting a little bit low on life, but Hook's wants to fight instead. Flash play is in. Mystique goes into the dive as well, but CLG peeling off here. Hextech ultimatum now. Zoning has middle of the fight, but Shoryu dives in. Pobelta, such Whoa. a massive scoop, and CLG This is <gasps> running over the team fight. That's almost an ace. The Hook is barely going to miss his Katsuri is going to indeed make sure it's an ace, and CLG just destroy EG in that team fight. Katsuri at the end saying, I'm here too, as the dragon gets picked up. Pobelter, very large in that fight, able to get a nice Emperor's Divide onto, I believe that was two or three members. And then the follow-up, Shifting Sands, was absurd damage coming out of the CLG Academy squad. Very well done, and they will pick up maximum advantage from this, finally breaking open this game. Looking back at the replay, you can see Hooks goes in, manages to get the far back hook. Absolute nut coming out as we do see Tien going forward. Hooks trying his best to keep everyone safe, but Pobelter is perfectly fine where he is. He continues forward, and there is just nothing Evil Geniuses Academy can do. Yeah, really well played there. Wait. Across the board, I feel like the Hextech Ultimatum looked a little too safe on the EG side. Pobelter saw the angle, the spike getting dove on by 
the rail, who actually did find two pretty key targets, but had no follow-up, unfortunately. Evil Geniuses trying to find the fire, but instead get routed, giving CLG the dragon, and of course the Baron. And we'll see and what they get done here with this buff. And a significant gold lead, but Tien versus Tony Top, he thinks he's alone. Is he really, though? And, you know, sometimes you, you sniff that out. Riven mains, they know. They know when the three-man is coming. Yeah, actually being very disciplined here. I mean, his whole team's in mid, they can't see anyone else. They're actually through the jungle as well, so... Yeah, all right, oh, now gonna get the bad the news. Okay, Ulti. well... All right, Tien, you know, 1v3, gonna try and dance his way out of there, but unfortunately, no luck this time around. Tony Top will indeed get the kill, but mid. CLG are pushing through mid. I think that's a pretty worthwhile trade. I, that might have been a call where Tien knew that there were multiple people there, and then the rest of the team said, no, 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 keep them there. You t risk your life, and then we'll get the mid inhibitor. And Tien disconnected. Man, it looks pretty silly, you know, when you see Dojo Kuhn poking up towards the top half of the map. But uh, EG know they can't win like a 5v5, right? It, with, when they have Baron. So instead, they try and make the play in the side lanes. They get things pushed out. They get the pick on bottom side. They lose an inhib for it, which obviously isn't a good trade. But EG, I think, trying to find avenues back into this game, or even just to stay afloat at this point in the game, because there's a rampaging Olaf especially. Pro Belt has got um, basically three items, can't be that far away from finishing that Void stuff at this juncture either. It's just so much power on the CLG side that EG like, don't even want to try and do the normal thing and like poke them off the inhibitors, because I think they realize that it's not really going to do anything. Might as well at least try and make a side lane play. I like this call. Definitely trying to push up the top lane, make sure that they have uh, easy access to the next Baron that's going to be spawning up after this buff is expired. And maybe even find the pick if Keel can fool someone well enough. Uh, Jojo Pune, not the fool though. Going to be able to back away from that. Mystiques as well, going to be able to back them up. So that's going to be another turret down. You usually don't want to defend this one at this stage in the game just because there is not enough space for you to back up. And with the Baron enhanced minions, that uh, stays alive for the moment. Actually going to back up there for CLG. Maybe worried about more people reinforcing through the red buff area. Also is going to take some recall. See, Tien is getting things pushed out in the bottom lane. EG kind of forced to stack up here and defend this tier 2, but the assault has stopped for now on the CLG side. And it looks like Baron is... All but one off at this stage, so so you're just gonna reset, spend their money, and then look for another team fight. And that's about the right call. It's all you can do is hope that you find the pick, maybe look out for Tien again, which could very well happen, and then use the teleports to try to make sure that nothing of serious loss occurs. Because if you lose anything beyond that tier two top, it's gonna be virtually impossible to come back from this unless you win a huge team fight. Evil Geniuses Academy, they're capable of it. They have the scaling, and uh, dare I say, they're playing for the late game at this point. Shoryu and Jojo Pune especially uh, are just waiting for that moment where they really come online and can burst over Pobelter, Katsuri, or even Tien if uh, the opportunity arises. All right, well, CLG just walking it in mid here. Still have the supers pushing in. Dragon's gonna be spawning in a couple. Probots are going to put up the uh, Sun Turret in mid lane. They're going to get their wards down. So doing a nice job of just moving through and doing the requisite vision work here on the CLG side. Tony Top also a little too far forward. Okay, well, that's not that good. Doesn't immediately run into the enemy Ooh. team and try and kill Camille. Oh, that hook though nice is hawk. maybe going to do it. Azir with the damage follow up and the play is nice as well for the follow up, but not enough to pick up the kill onto Tony Top, but still more than enough space to take this Dragon Soul. And EG, if they can even get down to that spot, Maybe they can contest, but again, such a tough fight to win. Was Pope really throwing out the dance there? I don't know if that was necessarily worth it. Keel tries to go in, and this might be a fight. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh, oh. Top beats his undo end as Tia with a massive flash done gets all the way in there. The ulti wow. finds one kill and gets almost another on the Keel? back end of it all as EG just gonna get owned. Hooks with another one there, finds it over the wall to protect his jungler, and Pobelter will finish off the ace as CLG can march down mid with a victory. Oh man, hooks with the frame perfect hook onto the teleporting to the or sorry, Camille. Tony Top had nothing to do in that case. He tries to go in. If you're hooked that early and Riven gets that good of a stun, you call it. You call it.
All right, well, Nexus, last Nexus of this Academy regular season does indeed go to CLG as they'll take down EG and solidify themselves in eighth. Pretty good look, honestly, for CLG. Uh, Tense Rivering was really cool to see. Kiel mm -hmm. looked great on Ola, Poe Belter as expected. He's really good on Azir. Uh, I think, again, if we're asking for a cohesion from these teams, definitely feel like CLG a bit more on the same page this game. Uh, EG is still showing uh, plenty of talent, and I think individually had some good moments, but I think you can tell that this is a team that needs a little bit more time to grow together. I think so, and even though they didn't finish the season in the best place, they still have a lot of takeaways that they can look positively. They didn't lose every game, and that's every victory counts, I think, and especially for morale. It may not be optimal, but you can still learn something there's still a way forward. And I think, especially once they learn to communicate a little better and once they really solidify what their strengths are, this is a team that can absolutely do better next season. Also potentially like a, a great send off game for Kiel, right? Uh, mm -hmm. With Proxy coming in, don't necessarily know like what Kiel's future is gonna be, whether he finds another team or maybe goes to an amateur team. Or obviously we just say like, hey, this guy's pretty good. Let's keep him on. And uh, fun fact, we actually have Kiel coming after the interview. Not yet, oh. not yet. But after the break, we'll have that, but we're not there yet. Um, really cool, really cool thing for like this player, right? To have an opportunity to, to play. And I guess when we, when we chat to him, it's coming up. Not now, not now. We'll, uh, we'll ask him. Yeah, honestly, I'm, I'm excited for it. And hopefully we'll be able to talk to him and ask some pretty good questions because uh, he's, he's been a player throughout the season that although hasn't found wins, I think it's been very successful as a jumpler. I, I feel like his pressure is always there. He always plays his early games pretty confidently. Against the top of the board, he falters, but that's going to happen until you've had a lot of time to practice. And Kiel now has had that time. I imagine he's only going to get better with more time. For sure. And again, given how like much changes being within CLG as an org, like having to bring wanted to bring POB in because they wanted to play RGS and, and all that kind of stuff. Like, it's a position that's it's tough to play in as like a potential temporary kind of sub. And I think he's had a great last game. It'd certainly be fun to see what he says. And we are going to have Kiel coming up after the break. So don't go too far away. We'll have an interview coming up after this. Oh, no break. Hi, Kiel. We're going right in. I'm so sorry. No break. We're going for the interview. Kiel, how you doing, mate? I've been doing pretty good. How are you? I'm great. I'm watching your gameplay and uh, you're kind of popping off. How was that final... Uh, game for you in the regular season. Uh, yeah, it felt pretty good. Uh, I was kind of not expecting to play Olaf, but we had a really good week of practice, and uh, yeah, everything went really well in game, except for a few mistakes. Yeah, and I mean, especially throughout the season, I feel like your Olaf has been pretty dominant. Was the strategy coming in today already planned that you were going to bully Tony Top, or was that just kind of the Riven versus Camille pick that spurred that on? Oh yeah, Tian Riven is just 1v9, so you just gotta make sure you play for him. That's all it is. We had a good plan coming today, I was pretty happy with our job. Definitely. And uh, kind of on that note, what's it actually been like working with Benji? I think one of the cool things about Academy this year is that a lot of ex-players are kind of moving into coaching roles. Um, so what has he been like as a coach? Well, I imagine he's fairly new to the position, but obviously not new to like, you know, high-level League of Legends. Yeah, I mean, I'm brand new, so I don't really have much experience with other coaches, but I really like working with Ben. Um, I think it's a lot, it's very interesting to have perspective from Balin, uh, like starting drafts and everything. And then also I've been working with like Wiggly a lot to like figure out jungle stuff. So it's been going pretty well. And I have to ask, because it is on your screen, uh, are you the real deal Keel? Yeah, of course. Also, we got shout out team Luke. Can't forget Luke and Brandini. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. All this stuff, yeah. <laughs> so I guess, uh, obviously, with Broxa uh, getting his visa clear, but obviously, who knows what's going on there. And with the regular season at an end, but still some games to play for CLG. Uh, kind of what are you looking forward to? And I guess, like, how's your experience been? Like like you said, you're a brand new player, just kind of thrust in this position. And like, hey, can you play for CLG Academy? You're like, sure. Like, what is that, what is that season yeah. been like for you? Kind of thrust into the spotlight so quickly. Yeah, that was kind of how it started. I uh, wasn't really planning on playing Academy. It was kind of a last minute thing. Um, so I just took it for what it was, did my best. I think I did better than I originally expected to do. So I'm pretty happy with my whole experience so far. Pretty good chances in my last game for uh, this time with Broxa coming. So yeah, I was pretty happy with the whole experience. And finally, uh, coming up, since you have, I believe, earned the eighth place spot, you will be participating in the next phase, which is the tier two, the tier two circuit of the Proving Grounds. So are there any teams that you've looked at in the amateur circuit and you've thought, wow, 
I'm afraid of that team, or wow, we're going to stomp that team. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be playing in the Grand Prix, but I got the boys in. Oh. So that's the real goal, yeah. I really Sorry think I'm that. just not going to be able to play, yeah. I was really looking forward to it. Well, uh, I doubt this is the last time we'll see you uh, in this arena, so looking forward to seeing you play in the future with whatever happens. But Kyo, thank you so much for joining us and, and chatting to us today. Thank you very much. Come on. Alrighty, and with that, that was our final Verizon post-game interview of the season. But I believe we do have a... Oh, I'm so confused. My brain oh, is... Yeah? I swear to God, it's working. It's, it's been a long day. You know what, KHMH? Let's just relax. Let's take a look back. Academy's oh. done. It's been great fun. Yeah. And I'm very much nice. looking forward to, to proving grounds. I mean, honestly, there's just so much talent that's going to be coming in. Not only the Academy teams, not only the amateur teams, but a full caster desk. I'm excited to see what those other guys are going to come up with because they are some pretty crazy cats over there. <laughs> well, it's certainly going to be a fun one to watch, but we are going to finish things off now and say goodbye. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a great day. So well. thank you for having me, Academy. It's been a while. I'm very happy to be back. Thank you to Mr. Cage in the Rage for casting alongside me all day. And of course, our entire remote broadcast crew who have been amazing throughout this whole time. But for now, we are going to throw it to a break and we'll see you for the Proving Grounds. Until then, see ya.